The thing I like about studying Minnesota history is the feeling that you're traveling through time. Sometimes it's just a few decades, could be more than a century, but today we are going all the way back to the beginning. No, further than that. Welcome to Minnesota Historia. I'm Haley, your guide to ancient agates. This is most like Minnesota, a small town of nearly 3,000 people with a moose, a lake, a charming movie theater, a mouth-watering pizzeria, and for one day every July, a street full of rocks and eager agate hunters. This is agate days, and these rock hounds are here for one reason, to find a Lake Superior agate in the agate stampede. Not diamonds, not gold, agates. The common person's gemstone, Lakers, Minnesota gold. This raises questions like, why? What's the deal here? What am I not getting? What's so great about these agates? Why are people so obsessed with them? We'll get back to those questions later. But first, where do Lake Superior agates come from? Yes, I realize a dump truck brought those particular rocks to this street in Moose Lake. I'm talking about the origin of agates in a larger, older geological sense. For that, we have to go back a billion years. That's when lava last flowed in northeastern Minnesota, as tectonic forces ripped North America apart and created the Superior Trough. As this lava cooled, it left millions of tiny little adorable air pockets inside of it. Dirty, rusty groundwater flowed into these pockets and deposited layers of quartz and other dissolved minerals over thousands of years. Your classic Lake Superior agate is made up of these colorful layers of quartz, usually orange, red, and yellow, because they're stained by iron. Lake Superior agates earned their name because they're so often found on the shores of Lake Superior. Thanks to the last ice age, you can also find them in Wisconsin, Michigan, and Iowa. Ice ages are like giant free-range rock tumblers, gobbling up our precious goodies and depositing them all over the Midwest. But the biggest and arguably the best Lake Superior agates are found just a few miles south of Lake Superior in the gravel of Carleton County, Minnesota, which is where Moose Lake is. Moose Lake! Known to agate hunters as the agate capital of the world, and for good reason. You've got your agate days with your agate stampede. You've got your 108 pound agate on display in the bank. Some say it's the largest in the world. And you've got the Moose Lake Agate and Geological Center. It's a museum and resource center located here in Moose Lake State Park. They are pretty, aren't they? This is Roger Beeble, a geologist and member of the Carleton County Gem and Mineral Club. He helps make Agate Days and the Agate Stampede happen. This was started uh, 50 years ago, and now we've become so big that we have to rent out the uh, Riverside Arena, the hockey arena here in Moose Lake. I got involved with this. Uh, my mentor was Tom Olson. They started this uh, in 1972, so they asked me if I wanted to do the Agate Stampede. As a geologist, they knew that I would be able to help out in many things. Sandstones, um, this is rhyolite. And I said yes, and it's been going on since. Roger took us to the Agate Stampede's secret headquarters, where they were loading two trucks with rocks. Oh, the agates we used to buy for a dollar a pound 10 years ago, and it went to $2 a pound. Now it's $3 a pound. Plus I have $500 in quarters and halves that we also put in so that the kids get the, the quarters and halves. So there's our trucks, all spiffed up and everything. They're probably like, where the hell is that guy? I was just wondering, where the hell is that guy? These agate hunters can be a secretive bunch. There's supposed to be a hundred of these. I'll just pull up by the white one, and then one of you guys will be up there to... Yep. There's no science to it. <laughs> Other, we're mixing three quarter inch rock and inch and a quarter rock because the agates are that size, so they don't stick out like sore thumbs. We put out 24 cubic yards of gravel in those two trucks, and then this year, 500 pounds of agates and $500 in quarters. I hope it goes good. So the agates are mixed in the rocks, and the rocks are dumped on the street. Now, 
who wants to see an agate stampede. So the kids have a great time here. Every rock has a story because picking up these rocks, you can tell if they're igneous, sedimentary, the three types of rocks are metamorphic, and um, where they come from. And it tells the whole the geology of that area. But uh, we, have, we have it all here. We have all the different types of rocks. Ah, huh, look at that. I just found an agate. If you want to find your own agate, I do have some tips. Hunt on sunny days. Quartz is translucent. It sparkles just a little bit in the sun. And so once you uh, get the eye for it, you'll see the translucence. You'll see this color. And you can find them real easily. It all depends on the glasses you wear, too. I can see that from way over there because of translucence. Go where the gravel is. Keep an eye out for gravel trucks replenishing roads, driveways, parking lots, or the shoulders of highways. Fresh gravel means fresh agates. And this big rock here is used for building uh, sewer mounds. Oh, there you go. See, there's the agate he just found. Don't forget, Lake Superior agates were stained by iron. Look for a rusty red. That's the most common color in a Lake Superior agate. In 1969, the Minnesota legislature named the Lake Superior Agate the state's official gemstone. And so uh, Tom Olson actually went down and gave agates to all the members of the state um, Senate and House and got that voted in as the state stone. Free agates? Is that even legal? Speaking of bending the law, agate hunting is very much illegal in many places in the state. Gravel pits now have to post signs forbidding it. And you can't hunt for agates in state parks, no matter how big or beautiful they might be. Look, I've only been an agate hunter for about 90 seconds now, but even I can tell you why so many people are obsessed with it. It's fun to find shiny stuff outside. And if you find yours on a beach, or in some overturned gravel, you might be the first human person to touch that agate in its entire billion year existence. Think about that. A dinosaur might have peed on your agate. Other episodes of Minnesota Historia include Duluth's Doomed Winter Olympics, Superior Shipwrecks, the Chief Buffalo Memorial Project, the Legend of St. Erho, and the Root Beer Lady. If you like this video, hit the subscribe button so you won't miss future episodes. If you really like this video, become a member of WDSE and support projects just like this.